Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level further maths. Here we're looking at the Cartesian form for the equation of a plane this time, so we can answer questions from exercise 9b. So we've already seen the vector form for a plane, and if you haven't, then feel free to have a look at the previous video to this. This video we're going to look at the Cartesian form. Now this form here is a little bit more tricky to understand, it takes a little bit more getting used to, but it's actually a, a much neater way of describing a plane than with three vectors. Let's just imagine ourselves now in um, two dimensions back with straight line graphs. Um, the equation of y equals 2x, minus, uh, sorry, 2x plus 1 could be described using this blue line as well, where the blue line is the normal vector to this red line here. So you can tell as that this blue line, um, if this blue line were to change at an angle, then this red line would also change at an angle as well if you force the right angle to stick here. And that's what we've effectively done. So what we can do here is you can spot the, um, the similarity between its rearranged equation, if we were to take away the 2x onto the other side, and its normal vector. You can see here this is minus 2, minus 2 on the x, 1 here on the bottom, 1 on the y here. So actually, um, using the normal um, or the perpendicular line, this blue line here, is actually quite a tidy way of describing the equation of a straight line. It's very unorthodox and we generally don't do it for straight lines, but it is quite useful when we come to vectors. Okay, and it can happen for much more complicated things as well. So y equals minus 2 fifths x minus 3 as well. If we were to work out um, this vector here, the vertical, so the, the perpendicular here, or the normal, um, normal just means a line that meets the equation at a right angle. Uh, if we were to rearrange this, then we would get 2x plus 5y equals minus 15, and you can see here that this normal vector is 2, 5. So actually, the normal vector is a really handy way of describing um, the equation of a line, um, and it can be easily rearranged into this as well. Okay, and you can really quickly spot the similarities between the equation of the line and the um, normal vector. Okay, so this is what we're going to do now. We're going to take a plane, and we're just going to take one vector that is perpendicular in all directions to that plane and just with that single vector we can describe that plane. Okay, so let's have a look now at how this applies to planes. So what we can do for any plane is we can find or, or we are given this vector here and this vector is at a right angle to the plane in every single direction that you can think of. And if this vector were to change, then the angle that this plane was at would also change as well. So if you can imagine now, taking that bit of paper that we had in the first video and stabbing your pen right through it. If your pen is always going to be attached to that piece of paper at a right angle, then the angle at which you fix your pen is going to, is going to um, change the angle that the sheet of paper is at as well. So we can describe the sheet of paper just by the angle that you're pointing your pen at. Okay, now generally we're going to call this vector an n vector, the normal vector. Normal is another word that we can use for a right angled line. Uh, and we're going to use n1, n2 and n3 as the three letters that we need for that. So, just as we saw with the equation of a line previously, for the normal vector n1, n2, n3, the equation of the plane is going to equal n1x plus n2y plus n3z equals d, and it needs some letter, some letter at the end here. Some, usually we're going to be able to replace that letter here with a number, okay? And usually we'll have... This, these three values as well. So it's going to be some multiple of x, some multiple of y, some multiple of z equals some number at the end. I'll describe what this number means for the plane in another video, but for the moment it's just worth noting that that value at the end there does correspond to something. Okay. 
And yeah, so no matter where, the value of D determines the exact location of the plane we're considering, okay? Um, to briefly describe it, it's, uh, the higher this D value is, the further away your plane is from the origin. So um, if D is zero, then your plane is going to go exactly through the origin. If your D value is massive, then it's going to be nowhere near the origin. Okay, let's have a look at a few questions here. The plane pi, so this uh, Greek letter here is the capital version of pi. So don't worry about that symbol, it's just capital pi, and it's what we use for a plane. The plane pi is perpendicular to the normal vector 3 minus 2, 1, and passes through the point P with position vector 8, 4, minus 7. Find a Cartesian equation of pi. Okay, so this here is your standard um, Cartesian equation for a plane. Okay, and the n1, n2, n3 letters here represent the normal vector. So wherever your plane is, it's going to be the normal vector to that plane. Okay, so in this case here, the normal vector to this plane is two, 3 minus 2, 1. So we can sub those letters in straight away. What we do, however, need to work out is this d value at the end. But we do know that it goes through this 8, 4, minus 7 coordinate. So what we can do effectively is substitute in 8 for the x coordinate, 4 for the y coordinate, and minus 7 for the z coordinate from this, from this um, coordinate here. So subbing these values in, and we get 3 times 8 minus 2 times 4, uh, plus minus 7. Working out the value of D, we get D is 9. So our final answer here is 3x minus 2y plus z equals 9. Fantastic. That looks so much neater than the three vectors and the two letters at the front of two of those vectors. It's a really nice way of um, writing the equation of a, ve of a plane. Okay. And this is what the plane is going to look like. So this purple line here that you see, that's the normal vector. So at every angle here, my pen is red, so it's not really showing up that well. But at every angle to that plane, this purple line is going to be at a right angle. And then this plane here is the red thing, and it's effectively a sheet of paper in three dimensions. And if D, the 9 value here was 0, it would go exactly through the origin here. But as 9 is quite big here, it's going to be a little bit away from the origin. And if D was much bigger, it'd be further away from the origin. Okay, so to summarise, we have two equations for a plane so far. We're going to have a look at a third later on, but these are our two equations so far. We have the vector form, where we have a starting coordinate, and then two other vectors that are direction vectors to two other coordinates. And we have a second form, which is the Cartesian form, um, where our plane is described singularly by a right-angled vector to that plane, the n vector, the normal vector, and equals some value at the end as well. And that value depends on how far away the plane is from the origin. Okay. So have a go at this single question here then. So pause the video and try this one out. All right, then. so question two says here that the plane pi is perpendicular to the normal vector minus 1, 3, 2 and passes through the position vector 4, minus 2, 6. Find the Cartesian equation of this plane. Well, we know that the equation, the Cartesian equation of a plane looks like this. So all we have to do to start with is substitute in this n vector here. We know that that's the n vector because it says it's the normal vector. Okay, so sub in minus 1, 3 on the y, and 2 on the z. But we still don't know what this d value is at the end here. And the way we work out the d value is by subbing in x, y, and z from a position coordinate. So this here, you could effectively call this an a vector, because a is always a, a position on that plane. Okay, so subbing this in, minus 4 add 3 times minus 2, add 2 times 6 equals d. Simplifying this, we get minus 4 minus 6 plus 12 
equals D, that's minus 10, add 12, that's 2. Now D here can be a negative number, so if you ever get a negative D, then don't worry, that is acceptable. Okay, so minus X plus 3Y plus 2Z, in this case, is going to equal 2. And that there is the equation of the plane that is perpendicular to this vector here and that will go through this coordinate here. Right then, so have a go at plenty of questions from exercise 9D then. Um, please do get a lot of practice at this. It is, um, it is quite a difficult and uh, a new and surprising thing um, and it's quite difficult to get used to this um, way of writing a... Uh, a an equation of a plane um, using a right angled vector to it. It makes much more sense to use the previous version, but do get used to this because once you have got used to it, um, it, it is much easier and there's no going back really. So do get lots of practice at this. Right, uh, thanks very much for watching.